Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. Today, we have some very exciting guests, Dr. Christina Yang and Dr. Teddy Altman, who are going to discuss with us the cardiovascular system, focusing specifically on the ECG. Good morning, Dr. Yang, Dr. Altman. Good morning, Blake and Jessica. Thank you for having me. Of course, we've been trying to have you on for a while. As a starting point, I think maybe you should start with what an ECG is and maybe to explain to our viewers how it's useful. Yes, um, an ECG stands for electrocardiogram. An ECG records parts of electrical signals that is generated by the heart. Um, the way that we record this is by placing multiple electrodes either on, on the limbs and on the chest. And these electrodes pick up an electrical activity from bodily fluids. So the ECG is not a direct recording of the heart. However, detections of any deviations can be picked up on the heart. And the recording of the ECG shows the cardiac cycle. Can you walk us through exactly what the cardiac cycle is? The cardiac cycle involves two major phases, the systolic and the diastolic phase. The systolic phase is the contraction phase. This is when blood is moving out of the chambers within the heart, while the diastolic phase, the heart is relaxed. This is when the chambers are filled with blood. The cardiac cycle is also about 0.8 seconds. If anyone needs a recap on heart anatomy, listen to our heart anatomy podcast posted last week. So I'll go ahead and start with the first step. The first step in the cardiac cycle is the ventricular filling. Blood is entering the heart via the vena cava and the pulmonary vein to the right and left atria respectfully. As blood enters the atria, blood passively enters the ventricle through the AV valve. This is also known as the TP interval. So during this step, does blood enter the atria or the ventricles? Well, the AV valves are open during this relaxation part of the cycle, and when blood enters the atria, it falls into the ventricles without any contraction. And then the next step in the cardiac cycle is the atrial depolarization and contraction, otherwise known as the P wave. During this event, any remaining blood in the atria is forced into the ventricles during atrial contraction. What initiates contraction? The atrial contraction is initiated by arrhythmic cells in the SA node. The action potential moved to the, moved to the left atria via um, gap junctions. What about the ventricles? Is there activity monitored on the electrocardiogram as well? Yes, of course. The SA node that I previously mentioned is connected to the AV node, which moves the depolarization into the ventricles. The AV node does this by moving the electrical signals down the Purkinje fibers and then rapidly down the bundle of his at the apex of the heart. That's really interesting. Is the AV node activity detectable on the ECG as well? Yes, it reflects the PR segment, which shows the AV node's slow conduction of action potential that allows the atria to complete the contraction before ventricular contraction begins. Hello, Dr. Altman. Besides the PR segment, I know that there's also a PR interval. What's the difference between the two? Great question, Jessica. The PR segment is the flat line that resides between the end of the P wave and on the end of the QRS complex. On the other hand, the PR interval begins at the onset of the P wave and ends at the QRS complex. This interval reflects the time between the start of the atrial depolarization to ventricular depolarization. Okay, thank you for the clarification. After the PR interval, I see that there's a short dip. What is that representative of? That short dip is called the Q wave. Here, the AV node electrical signal reaches the ventricular septum and depolarizes it. Okay, I see. What triggers the highest point of the QRS complex? The high peak is known as the R wave, which is triggered by the Purkinje fibers delivering the action potential to the contractile cells of the ventricle walls. And the next part of the ECG, what is that downward spike? That right there is the final part of the QRS complex called the S wave. The S wave represents the final depolarization of the ventricles signaling the end of the contraction cycle. Okay, so overall, how would you describe the QRS complex? Overall, the QRS complex takes the three waves, as we discussed, the Q, R, and S, and is usually looked at as a whole. The complex represents ventricular depolarization, which drives the contraction of the ventricles. 
This is really important to understand because the contraction of the ventricles is arguably the most important part of the cardiac cycle. This is what pushes the blood to the rest of the body. Well, because that's the function of the heart. I can see how that's important. Yeah, definitely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I have another question. Uh, what is the next part of the ECG? Do we move on to the last hump or? Uh, not quite yet. There's another important part, which is called the ST segment, which is the area between the S wave and the last hump called the T wave. The ST interval, and which, is, which does not include the T wave. The ST segment represents the time between the ventricular depolarization. Okay, so now do we go into the last part of the ECG? Yes, now we do. This is the final wave in the ECG. The T wave represents the ventricular repolarization. This is the final step of the electrical activity seen in the ECG. This is important as it allows for the next wave to occur. And what's about, or what, what's the importance about the last interval for the ECG? The last interval of the ECG is called the QT interval, which measures from the initial QRS complex to the end of the T wave. This interval is a representation of the time it takes for the ventricles in the heart to depolarize, contract, and then repolarize, which is relaxed. The length of this interval is dependent on the heart rate. A slower heart rate, rate will have a longer interval and vice versa. All right, well, thank you so much for your answers, and we hope to see our guest again um, in another meeting. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.